One thing in common with all living things is they reproduce. They make copies of themselves. And some organisms, they reproduce asexually, where um, the offspring has only one parent, just like this hydra seen here in this uh, diagram. A in asexual means it's not sexual. It doesn't have um, a recombining of genes. All genetic material comes from just one parent. There's no mom and dad contributing chromosomes to the baby. Um, the offspring are genetically identical to the parent. You could think of them as a clone or an identical twin is a way of thinking about it. Here's a picture of mint. And this mint is all one organism. This runner at the bottom here is reproducing little plants that have the same genetic material as each other. So they're like identical twins of one another, one organism. In some walled cells organisms, cell division is a method of asexual reproduction. The amoeba, which we see here, is just simply splitting, and that's considered to be a form of asexual reproduction. We have a mother cell giving birth to two daughter cells, and these two daughter cells are identical to the mother cell. Paramecia do this as well. Um, paramecia look like slippers. They move around with little cilia um, that you can see here. Cilia means like eyelash. So they have these little tiny eyelashes that they're whipping around and they reproduce quite rapidly by simply splitting. Some organisms, like many insects, they'll reproduce sometimes asexually and sometimes sexually. Sometimes if the organism is experiencing environmental change, they'll choose to reproduce asexually in order to give their offspring a better chance of survival because sexual reproduction creates more diversity. And there's a better chance that an offspring will survive and reproduce if they're not exactly like the parent. With bacteria, they reproduce by just simply splitting. Uh, they undergo what's called binary fission, splitting in two. And um, with, we see this with most prokaryotes, organisms that we can't see the nucleus. They're simple organisms. They just have a loop of DNA, a chromosome. Um, and you'll see this sometimes with some uh, eukaryotes as well, like the paramecia and the amoeba. There's your amoeba actual picture. And here you see the paramecia splitting. This is what the brown paramecia look like that we look like we look at in living environment. They look very similar. They have like a little slipper shape, and that little spot where you would put in your your foot into the slipper, that's how they eat. That's called the oral groove. This is my favorite organism because um, it actually eats here through what's called a mouth anus. And these are tentacles, the hydra. Um, and when they reproduce, they go through puberty. They just grow a little organism off of their side. Can you imagine coming to school and just like growing a mini me off the side of you? That would be pretty crazy. But that's what hydra do when they reach reproductive maturity. And this little baby that's about to butt off is going to be exactly like the parent genetically. Yeast do this as well. We know that yeast is important in baking and brewing and making ethanol at the ethanol plant. Yeast is really important. The way these yeast organisms uh, reproduce is just by uh, budding as well. They create a little organism off the side. So yeast is a fungus. They're single cell. They reproduce by asexual reproduction as well. Vegetative propagation is another manner in which organisms can asexually reproduce. Strawberries do this. They send out runners underneath the ground uh, out of their root systems, and they uh, start uh, producing shoots that result in new plantlets that are genetically identical to the original. So many organisms reproduce in this way, strawberries, raspberries. This stand of quaking aspen can be considered, considered one organism because they're all connected by a, a vast root system. This is in Utah and Fish Lake National Forest. And this is one of the largest organisms in the world because the whole forest essentially is um, one, one tree and it's a um, genetically identical trees. So you could think of them as one organism or a bunch of little organisms connected by 
uh, a root system. But one thing we do know is that they're genetically identical. They have the same chromosomes and sequences. Starfish reproduce by fragmentation. I always think this is pretty neat. If you split them, they'll grow new uh, starfish legs. That's pretty neat. Again, a way to asexually reproduce. And these guys are just the coolest things. These are the whiptail lizards. And they have some of these at the Buffalo Zoo. They're pretty amazing. Uh, they undergo what's called parthenogenesis, which means vir virgin birth. Um, they have eggs and they just grow into an organism without being fertilized from a male. So the mother and the daughter are genetically identical. And we see that some organisms just go through this type of process, especially when they're isolated, like in a desert environment where there's not a, a lot of opportunity to find a mate. Some organisms, particularly like lizards, um, maybe some fish, they'll, they'll go through parthenogenesis. And, and that's pretty pretty neat and again you can check these out at the buffalo zoo uh once social distancing uh, guidelines uh, are are released but they're cool there has been some stories like i mentioned before of fish this uh bonnethead hammerhead shark is thought to have undergone virgin birth which is pretty nuts um the dna test of the pup the baby from the shark genetically identical to the parent pretty neat um, the egg just developed into a new organism. This is relatively rare in the case of um, sharks, but we see it, you know, sometimes in insects, in, in lower organisms like reptiles and things like that. 